We always have a blast chatting with our guests about all sorts of different topics, but sometimes we go off the rails and dig deeper into their automotive and motorsports pasts. As a bonus, let's go behind the scenes with this Pit Stop minisode for some extra content that didn't quite fit in the main episode. Sit back, enjoy, and remember to like, subscribe, and support Break Fix on Patreon. Well, boys. I think Eric wants to close the bar. No, I'll leave it open. I got nowhere to be. I mean, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to make a joke about my poser drink. I couldn't do a Negroni, so I did an Aperol spritz, which is basically same taste, half the guilt. <laughs> yeah, and, and Eric, as much as I know you love country music, you know there is a song called Red Solo Cup. Yes, there is. There is. Mm-hmm. There is indeed. Well, say country music, what about Travolta's truck and urban cowboy? That thing wasn't too bad. <laughs> That was a great movie. You know what's funny is Mark brought up the Viper show. I'm literally staring at the box set on my shelf right now. It's right over there. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I know you guys would imagine that I would want the Fall Guy truck, but that's not an event for movie cars for me. I don't know why, but I've loved it since I was little. The 50 Mercury Monterey from the movie Cobra was still Sylvester. Oh, Sly. Sly, yeah. I've been in love with that car since I was a kid. I don't know why, but it's just like, maybe it was like the go fast button when he flips the switch for the nitrous or something. It was yeah, I think it was sweet. That was a nice ride. I remember that car. Daniel, I think you're miss. I mean, you're missing something here. There's a van from the movie Dumb and Dumber that they dressed up. <laughs> mutt cuts, yeah. As a pet groomer, yes. Yeah, mutt cuts. <laughs> That's the movie car you want. <laughs> I wouldn't sport it. I wouldn't care. I think Sly always had cool cars because if you look at the Expendables, yeah. that Chevy truck that he drove in that was oh, yeah, hot. The 50s model. Look at Rocky, yeah. Rocky Two, II, Rocky Four, Lamborghinis, Maseratis, Trans Ams. I mean, he he was always surrounded by really cool cars. You know, there was one movie car we didn't touch on, and I really feel I have to, otherwise she's going to kick my butt. And she is one of my all-time favorites. I love her to death, and I would love oh, to bring her. Christine. Christine. I think she is one of the finest, finest killer cars that ever was. And the other one, of course, was the car. Who remembers the car? The car. Yep. Mm -hmm. The big black beast. Yeah, that was. I thought you meant Car from Knight Rider, the evil twin of Kid. Oh, yeah, the evil twin. Yeah, no, it's yeah, he had a great. I mean, how many of those replicas are out there too? To include the Ghostbusters Ecto One, you know that Cadillac ambulance hearse, whatever. There was a period there. And the DeLorean kind of set it in motion where so many on-screen cars you wanted in your garage. What about Mr. Reynolds' Trans Am? Absolutely. Screaming chicken. Oh, man. Yeah. Woo! And then, of course, you got Magnum's Ferrari, the All 308. Right. That's 308. You got Crockett's Testarossa and maybe that Corve Daytona thing, whatever yeah. that was. The only thing with those cars is you could just buy those cars, right? You didn't have, you didn't have to build them. You could buy a 308. You got 308 like Tom yeah. Selleck had, yeah. right? So that's true. Yeah, just like the Trans Am. I mean, Trans Am even made it. I think it was was it called Y eighty two or the Y-82? Bandit Edition? Yeah, yeah. The stripes, the black. It was everything the Bandit car had. And one of my favorite cars, if we could really get into it, the sixty uh, eight Charger used in Bullet. Bullet. Yep. Me being kind of a Ford guy, Chrysler guy all the way through, mostly Ford, it's interesting. I always do, and Eric points it out, you're a closet Chrysler guy all the way through. But God, that black Charger, there was no, I, I really don't think there was ever a better henchman car than that black Charger. That thing was just so sinister and so quiet. And oh, God, did it kick that Mustang's butt up and down the street. It, oh, incredible car. But yeah, there's so many of them that we could have picked on. So many of them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Tons. Pretty much the same car, but opposite ends of the spectrum. You have to go with the Pontiac from Rockford Files, which was a plain Jane Brown ugly. But then on the other end, of the, you had Burt Reynolds in the Trans Am for Smokey and the Bandit. And that's a phenomenally known car. I'm such a weird nerd that I love... If you remember Sir Roger Moore and Tony Curtis in The Persuaders, especially the opening episode, Dino 246 versus an Aston Martin Vantage V8. I mean, what a setup for a show. Absolutely awesome, right? And then they they almost hit each other when they they reach mm-hmm. the hotel there in Monaco. And it's like, you, you, ah, right? And then they become like the best of buddies throughout the show. Cars used to be on-screen heroes, right? Now, to Jeff's point, we got the Fast and the Furious. And it's like, well, what do we do with that? I've got one that I can almost guarantee that nobody else even thinks of. Two of my favorite cars, and you know I have a bunch of favorite movie cars. Two of my favorite movie cars 
were from the movie Roadhouse. Oh. Uh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, the one where he pulls out in that badass 80s Mercedes and he yeah, tosses the keys. The SEC. Yep, he tosses the keys to the homeless guy. And then, what was it, a 65 or 67 Buick that he yeah. gets the extra tires for because he knows they're going right. to get slashed at the bar? Yep, 65 because it had the clamshell yeah. headlights. That thing was so perfect right. because it was like under the radar, but it had a big V8 in it. It was badass. It, it was perfect for him because that was his character. He was under the radar, but super badass. Yeah, he had to have a beater car for that job. Well, that's yeah, like that all the good. Sam Raimi or the Raimi brother films. They feature that 78 oldsmobile or whatever it is the white one they call it the classic it's like in every army of darkness movie and all those it's like the same car over and over and over again apparently they bought like a fleet of them or something it's insane Mm -hmm. i read that in bruce campbell's autobiography (laughs) ninja turtles van that's another one oh no no (laughs) you know you bring up van nessa quite a bit what's funny is it's hard to tell the difference sometimes between the a-team van and vanessa they're both a vandura van other than the paint scheme, they both have the wheel flares. The 18 band has a spoiler. Vanessa, if I'm not mistaken, that was more like a 73 or 74. The 18 van was a lot newer. It was an 80s van. Dan would know more about that than I would, but Vanessa was actually a pretty old van. She had round headlights, if I remember correctly, dual round headlights. I have to look, have to look that up. Yeah, I will give you this information real quick. Hold one second. Uh oh. Here's what I put out there for you guys. So now we're, you're picking like a, a show or a movie that's basically got the one car that's in it. So how about a movie that's got a bunch like Gumball Rally, which I just watched the other day, or Cannonball Run? You got a plethora of cars in those. What about in those ones? Or the movie Used Cars? Used Cars. Oh, love yeah, that Used movie. Cars. <laughs> love that movie. Rat Race. There's another one. Yeah. What the hell was that car that Jackie Chan was in in Cannonball Run? Was that a Mitsubishi? That was a little Mazda. Subaru. Subaru. It was Subaru. almost, it was a 323 souped up because I, I know that for Subaru. a fact reason because my very first car was a Mazda GLC and the 323 was basically the same thing, a little hatchback. But they put that jet thing in the back and all that crap. Had, I don't know the guy's real name, but Jaws was his partner. Yes. 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 Yeah, Jaws. Were the, the first one was a Subaru. It was a little Subaru, Subaru. hatchback. And in Cannibal Run 2, they had a Mitsubishi Starion. I thought it yeah, was a Starion. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, they dropped it out of a plane, remember? Yeah. And yeah. then they had to go into invisible mode. Yes, yep. yes, yes. <laughs> My God. Yeah. Those are fun movies. They really are. I mean, I you know, I, I think all of us were probably rooting for the Kuntash in the very beginning. but Well, we were rooting for something in the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it's funny though, for Cannibal Run 2, was it 2? Yeah, it was 2. It was interesting because two of my favorite cars, Countach aside, if you remember, Burt Reynolds and Dom DeLuise were army guys and they were running in an Imperial limousine. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. That car is extremely rare. They only built between four and six. And there's a big debate as to how many they actually built of those Imperial limousine. I would absolutely love to get my hands on one of those things. I really would. But then, of course, how could you ever, ever discount Jamie Farr yeah. as the sheep with his yeah. big fat Rolls Royce going 160 miles an hour down the road? I that <laughs> and you know to talk again about poser cars we saw the cannonball run lamborghini countach at pebble beach it was actually yeah. there the actual movie car you walked up to it and you're like oh that's so cool i saw it in the movie ah! and then you you kind of realize the junk that they bolted onto it and w- <laughs> the biggest want want moment for me was that exhaust like yeah it's the 10 anza pipes coming out the back and it's really just a suitcase muffler with a bunch of dead pipes connected to it and i'm like oh that's lame you know it looks good on tv but in person you're just sort of like i just want a regular kuntash without the spoiler on the nose going back into that and going back into our poser thing that car is an ultimate poser car because it's posing to have all those exhaust pipes it's posing to have this posing to have that it purports i am fast i am modified i am everything you want to be but like you said you look underneath it and you realize there's still only two pipes or four pipes coming out the others are just there for decoration. That right there is the epitome of a poser. You're putting on airs that you're you're something better than you really are, if that makes any sense at mm-hmm. all. And yet it's a full-blown Countach. Oh, yeah, no doubt about that. Yeah, but it's in poser mode. There was a movie, I forget which movie it was, but the Resvani. You know what that is? No. I don't think so. 
So the Resvani, if you look it up, it's this big, huge tank looking SUV thing. And I thought that's what it was. Some piece of shit, just bolt on kit car thing. But it turns out it's actually owned by like sheiks and, you know, presidents. Oh. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Top Gear had it one. Um, yeah, they did. What's his name? He was driving the, uh, Richard Hammond was driving one of these yeah. monstrosities. Yeah. 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 And they make a six wheel version, like all this stuff. It's sort of like the modern version of the Lamborghini Cheetah or the LM. Yes. LM002. 002. That's it. Yeah. 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 You know, we did a story on one of those in Garage Style. It wasn't called that. R word that you're using, Jeff, it was something else, but it was this armored personal tank. I mean, it really, really was a cool, cool vehicle. It really pissed me off. We did the story on it. And because of that story, one of our subscribers actually bought one of those things. Wow. And I still couldn't sell that company an ad. I, I'm like, dude, I just sold one of your cars. <laughs> don't buy an ad for me. No, we don't believe in your publication. It's too small. I'm like, yes, but I have the right audience, you know? Whatever. <laughs> in the poser conversation, we didn't talk about the Morgans. I always wondered, like, how. Oh, Morgans felt. are cool. Are they, though? Like, what the hell yes. are they trying to be like still? <laughs> they're trying to beat themselves. Yeah, I don't know, but they're cool. <laughs> you know who's a big Morgan guy is Seinfeld. He's a big Porsche guy. I didn't know about Morgans. Yeah, he's a big Morgan guy. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. Well, in regards to the vans, Vanessa, she's a 71, and the 18 van is an 83. Oh, wow. That's like telling the difference between a square body and a square body mm. within 10 years, you know. <laughs> Dan, is Vanessa a GMC, like the 18 van, or is she a Chevy? It's a Chevy. It is. Okay, because I know yeah. BA's van was a GMC. a GMC. So now, was that the same year and everything in the new A-Team movie? Oh, that's interesting. Uh, let me check that. It looked like it. I enjoyed the new movie. I thought it was awesome. That was an awesome movie. That was really you know, when it came to A Team, what I really wanted was Faces Corvette. So, if you think they're saying for the movie, they used a '94. What? Um, yeah. What? How did they do that? Were they strap on the old front end? Yeah, man, that thing looks so similar. That's because they've been making the Vendura the same way forever. Yes, they didn't change much. Yeah, and for the movie, it was actually the Chevy. So I don't. Know if, I'd have to go back and watch. I haven't watched the movie in ages. I didn't see if it has the Chevy badges or if they swapped with the GM badges. At. When did GMC stop making vans? They can still make them. They still make vans? House. They make the Sierra van and stuff. Yeah, they still make work vans, I think. They do? All right. I didn't know they still did or not. I don't know. I want to see the one from the movie. Because, like... Yeah, the 2023 Savannah passenger van. Really? 2023 Savannah cargo van. What year is the movie? 2013, maybe? I don't know. Has it been 10 years already? Yeah, wow. I'm trying to find, like, a promo picture so I can just look at it the way it was presented in the movie. Okay, I see it now. It's softer. It's definitely, yeah, it's sort of a, it's a round body, oh, yeah. but they made it look like an old square body van. Dude, I would have that in a heartbeat. <laughs> I would have that in a heartbeat. Like that is so freaking cool. It does have a GMC badge on the front of it though. You could really tell the difference when you see the original one because the original one's edges are so much more crisp and you can tell it's a square body versus the yeah. one from the movie is it's softer because it's the later round body style stuff. So the one that jumped out to me the poser mobile that might be on the upward. We hope you enjoyed another awesome episode of Break Fix Podcast brought to you by Grand Tory Motorsports. If you'd like to be a guest on the show or get involved, be sure to follow us on all social media platforms at Grand Touring Motorsports. And if you'd like to learn more about the content of this episode, be sure to check out the follow-on article at gtmotorsports.org. We remain a commercial-free and no annual fees organization through our sponsors, but also through the generous support of our fans, families, and friends through Patreon. For as little as $2.50 a month, you can get access to more behind-the-scenes action, additional pit stop minisodes, and other VIP goodies, as well as keeping our team of creators fed on their strict diet of Fig Newtons, Gumby Bears, and Monster. So consider signing up for Patreon today at www.patreon.com forward slash GT Motorsports. And remember, without you, none of this would be possible.